We Love It Raw! Hi, this is We Love It Raw with A.S. Caldero, Chris Corey, The Future, and We Ness. Please subscribe, listen, share, tag, make people hear this. This is a great show. Thank you guys. We love you. We love it. Raw! As you hear the theme song in the back, WWE lost one of its own. Hall of Famer Roddy Roddy Piper passed away this past weekend at the age of 61. And he was an icon, a legend, and most importantly, a pioneer in the business. He revolutionized what it meant to be a heel. He played the heel to a T. And I grew up watching him in the 80s, the 90s, his days in WCW, back to WWE, to his Hall of Fame induction ceremony speech. And this guy really went all out about his life, his struggles, his accomplishments in and out of the ring. And he was brash, he was harsh, controversial, but that's what made Roddy Roddy Piper what he was when he was a wrestler. He was also a movie star. And his one famous quote that I love, I forgot the name of the movie, but it came, I came here to kick ass and chew bubble gum. I'm all out of bubble gum. And that's one of the, the quotes that lives in my head to this day about Hot Rod Roddy Roddy Piper. And there's many, many more quotes that live out in, in my head. But, Roddy, rest in peace, brother. You were a pioneer. I had the privilege and the honor to see you at Monday Night Raw in 2009 in Madison Square Garden as a guest host. You are truly were one of the greatest wrestlers of the generations that I grew up watching wrestling. And we are all saddened by your sudden loss. Piper, rest in peace, brother. The WWE lost a good, talented individual. But with that fitting tribute to Roddy Roddy Piper, Monday Night Raw kicks off with Seth Rollins and how he comes out now and brags and brags constantly about what he did to John Cena. For those who don't remember, Seth Rollins broke, literally broke, John Cena's nose. It looked like an inflated balloon did Cena's nose last week. And apparently it required emergency surgery. Now, I never heard of an emergency surgery on the nose. I heard about it being put back into place, and I don't want to go through that. So apparently that's what happened with Cena. So he wasn't on Monday Night Raw tonight, but Seth Rollins did issue a challenge to John Cena. And the challenge was that he wants Cena to put his U.S. title on the line in Brooklyn in three weeks at the Barclays Center at SummerSlam, and Seth Rollins will do the same. So, the match that Seth Rollins proposed was a title-for-title title match. The WWE World title was on the line. The United States title was on the line. One man will walk out with both titles. Either the U.S. title and the WWE title, or the U WWE title and the U.S. title. It could be either way. So that, it's going to be something to watch for. We haven't heard a confirmation yet from John Cena, but I think we're going to hear it either next week or the week after leading into SummerSlam. So after Rollins makes that announcement, he decides he wants to do what John Cena has been doing since Cena won the U.S. title back in March. And that was hold an open challenge. And Cena, since March, has been holding U.S. Open challenges after U.S. Open challenges. Where any superstar would go against John Cena for the cover of the United States title. So Seth Rollins decides to up the ante. He decides, for the first time ever, in the history of Monday Night Raw, there will be a WWE title open challenge. 
but Seth Rollins makes it with a caveat, a stipulation of some sorts. The guy, challenger, has to be under six feet tall and has to weigh less than 200 pounds. Now, there's not many guys in WWE that fit that caveat. So, Seth Rollins says, El Torito, this is your chance. This is the moment of a lifetime for you. Come out and face me for the title. Just when we thought he was going to get El Torito, he got Neville, the man that gravity forgot. And ladies and gentlemen, Neville put up a hell of a fight. There was two opportunities that Neville came inches away from being WWE Champion. One is when he hit a beautiful su suplex, which led into a bridge type of pin, and the referee's hand was coming down for three, and I thought literally that hand did hit three, but the instinct of Seth Rollins got him out. And that was one time that Neville almost became WWE Champion. The next time that Neville became almost WWE Champion is when he hit the Red Arrow. And he hit it to perfection. And Rollins was out. But Rollins, with all good awareness, had the foot on the rope. Referee saw it. Match continued. It threw Neville off his game. And Neville decided... If I hit it once, I can hit it again. So he decides, let me try the red arrow again. And this time he missed. Rollins hits the pedigree. And Rollins picks up and retains the WWE title. But it was a good match. And it was a very good way to start Monday Night Raw. Other matches that went on tonight on Monday Night Raw. And segments. Uh, was the Divas Revolution match. This time we had Becky Lynch and Charlotte, now known as the Submission Sorority Sisters, and they picked up a big win over the Divas Champion Nikki and her sister Bree the Bellas, with Alicia on the outside and Paige was on the outside with the Sur Submission Sorority Sisters. And this was good. Uh, Becky had the uh, Disarmor locked in on Bree. And then Charlotte had the figure eight locked in on Nikki, which got Nikki to tap out. So a much big needed win for the now newly formed Submission Sorority Sisters. And Paige then fought Naomi of Team B.A.D. Beautiful and Dangerous. Uh, she, got pay she got Naomi to tap out to the P.T.O. So, the Divas Revolution is in full force, and tonight was all about submission sorority. So, it was a good night for those girls. Segment-wise, uh, there was two that really got me uh, hooked. Uh, the ongoing feud between Kevin Owens and Cesaro. And this has been dating on for a very long time already. Uh, and it came to almost a boiling point tonight on Miz TV. And... Owens took jabs at Cesaro, but Cesaro came right back and hit Owens right below the belt. And Kevin Owens always goes by his motto, fight, Owens, fight. And I think it's a good motto. Because Owens does bring the fight, and he always wins. But lately, according to Cesaro, he's been walk, Owens, walk. And just when we thought tonight on Miss TV we were going to have a clash of titans between Cesaro and Kevin Owens. It came to that when Cesaro had him ready for the swing, but Kevin Owens got out of it and left the ring, thus getting a walk Owens walk chant. But Kevin Owens murmured to Cesaro, not now, not at this price, my terms, my time. So I'm thinking... SummerSlam, Brooklyn, in three weeks. Then we talk Brock Lesnar and his main event with the Dead Man. And Heyman, as good as a promoter this guy is, cut one of the best promos I've seen in a long time. And he goes on and on and calls The Undertaker a bitch, a beggar, a loser, 
and how he's begging Vince McMahon for this match, how he begged WWE, the brass, you know, how he's just like, you know, he's a crybaby bitch, and this and that. And right then and there, I thought The Undertaker was going to come out and just haul off and just knock the crap out of Paul Heyman. But The Undertaker reportedly was not on Monday Night Raw tonight. Instead, Heyman goes, I'm now bringing out to you the man who is now the man in 22-1, and one, the conqueror, Brock Lesnar. And Brock Lesnar is on the ring steps inside the ring as he's like proclaiming himself the gods of gods in WWE. How he will be the god when he beats The Undertaker in three weeks in Brooklyn. And Heyman acknowledged that you know, and that he says that the Undertaker will rest in peace, but it won't be peaceful. He will rest in pieces as he will be entered into Sioux Plaque City. So that is something that I think is going to get even more intense leading into SummerSlam. You're going to see another encounter between Taker and Lesnar within the next three weeks. So, I can guarantee you that. The main event was an eyesore. It was a good main event. When I mean eyesore, I mean it was good. Uh, the main event consisted of the Wyatts, Bray, and Luke, along with Mr. Money in the Bank, Sheamus, to go against two former members of the Shield, brothers in arms, Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns, along with former Money in the Bank winner, former WWE Champion, World Champion, Intercontinental Champion, whatever champion you want to call Randy Orton. Randy Orton was in the ring with Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. And it, this was a good match, very intense, good moves, epic. And the closing moments of the match showed uh, Roman Reigns getting a Superman punch, hitting a nice running dropkick on Sheamus, leading to a spear, leading to a Miss Bro kick by Sheamus, then getting the RKO by Randy Orton. Thus, again, the team of Orton, Ambrose, and Reigns of a victory. Now, we don't have any matches for those guys yet, but I can mark my word, you will see a Randy Orton-Sheamus match in Brooklyn SummerSlam, probably made within the next week. So that's how Monday Night Raw uh, came to a close, and just a little bit more about Roddy Piper, uh, if you want to see anything Piper, go on YouTube, watch one of his movies that he was in, watch Piper's Pit, they're good, and if you want to see anything WWE Piper, if you have the network, please take a look at it. You won't be disappointed with what I was talking about with the Hot Rod. And it's sad to see that a guy this young gone from the WWE family. So, like I said, if you have the network, take a look and watch anything you can about the Hot Rod, Roddy, Roddy Piper. Tonight on the WWE Network uh, was the return of the Stone Cold Podcast. I love watching these things. And usually Austin likes to go all out. But tonight he had a diva on. So it was a little harsh, a little brash. But it wasn't what you see when he had Vince, Steph, Jer you know, and all those other guys on. Uh, he held it down ju uh, just a bit. And he had Paige on tonight. So... We learned a lot about Paige. You know, she's got a foul mouth, but that's what makes Paige Paige. We also learned uh, that she came from a uh, long history of a wrestling family. And that her mom was taking bumps and bruises while Paige was a womb. And she was trained by her father. Her brothers were into wrestling. Her sisters were into wrestling. Her uncle was a referee. The whole family was involved in wrestling, whether it's WWE independent leagues, minor leagues, whatever you want to say it. Paige's family was a wrestling family, and 
We also learn that Paige grew up idolizing Dusty Rhodes, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Lita, one of the old divas from the 90s, like a bunch of plays. And that's how she wanted to become a wrestler, when she idolized these guys, you know, because she was like, I want to be like a Stone Cold. I want to be like a Lita. I want to be like an Alundra Blaze or whoever, you know, and that was something of interest that I never knew about Paige, you know. This girl's 23 years old. She's been wrestling for 10 years already. Shocking to know. And a lot of those years, like I said, came overseas. And we also learned that Paige got rejected by WWE once when she tried out, when it was called FCW. But she continued to train with her father, her mother, her brothers, her sisters, other trainees, other trainers. And she really got into it more and more. And she sent out the resume yet again. WWE got a hold of it, gave her a tryout in NXT. And she went on to great things in NXT, becoming the first NXT Women's Champion, getting up the night after WrestleMania, beating AJ, ending her 295-day reign, becoming a two-time Divas Champion in the process, starting the Divas Revolution, forming a new tag team called the Submission Sorority Sisters, and I have to say, watch the network, watch the podcast, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you want to see anything else, Paige, watch the WWE Network. You'll learn everything you can there is about Paige. Success goes a long way to establishing a solid career in the WWE. Teamwork is also the factor that determines success in the WWE. Let me give you a few examples of teamwork. The Dudley Boys, DX, The Acolytes, Edge and Christian, The Brood, The Hardys, The Corporation, The Corporate Ministry. And they were all successful because they worked together. So, last night on WWE Tough Enough, what better way to talk about teamwork than have the primetime players who were successful as a tag team, are successful as a tag team because they're the current WWE Tag Team Champions, but they also established teamwork with other individuals. So they tried to talk about what they did throughout their career and how it goes to being successful as working with others. So that was the theme of yesterday's Tough Enough, teamwork, working well with others. And one person really prevailed, and his name was ZZ. ZZ prevailed. He stepped up his game when it came to teamwork because he has the experience in the past in Louisiana of working with others as a volunteer firefighter. And last night they had to uh, work together as Orange County firefighters and try to uh, extinguish a flame in a fast amount of time. And ZZ's team prevailed expeditiously. I mean, they did one heck of a job. Teamwork went a long way. They communicated well with each other, they guided each other, and they got through the fire in about, I say, 12 minutes or so. One team that did not succeed was Sarah Lee's team, which had Chelsea. And I'll tell you, her team bombed, failed miserably. Why? Lack of communication, lack of teamwork. They did not work together. They did not communicate with each other. Their team was in disarray. And it showed because they got through the fire in about 17 minutes. Which is really not good because then people would have been dead if there was a real fire. So I'm really impressed on how ZZ's team came together because of ZZ's experience as a volunteer firefighter. And because he communicated 
well with others in teamwork. He would fit well in a tag team, ZZ Will, if he makes it to WWE. So with that being said, we come to the elimination part of Tough Enough. Three guys, four girls. And this week it was an all-girl elimination. Gigi was there. Chelsea, Sarah. And there was a little bit of a tension between Sarah and Gigi over the training where one was thrown uh, almost right into the head, almost paralyzed her. And there was no sorry about it. And there was a little bit of animosity. And we learned that Chelsea, the newcomer, got eliminated from Tough Enough. So now we're down to the final six. Three guys, three girls. And it's getting down to the nitty gritty. It's getting interesting. The tensions are high. The tensions are flowing. I want to hear who you think will win. Tough enough.